Let's make a fast catch up on what happens there. So if we will have a convex domain k in the Rn space and we will consider a log concave measure mu with density e to minus v, where v is a convex function. So we will consider also a sovereign space a w12 and by w2 we want to note we define a sovereign space of all functions u such that function u vanishes on the boundary of k. And when we will speak about gradient, we will mean to be gradient of function. So let's start from some uh, definitions. First definition that we would like to consider is the definition of torsional rigidity. Torsional rigidity of a domain k can be defined with respect to measure mu as supremum of ratio square of integral of u uh, over uh, integral of square of gradient of u. And again, we consider all functions u vanishing on the boundary of k. We can define also torsion function v. Torsion function v is a solution of differential equation lv equals minus 1 on k with boundary, directly boundary condition v equal is 0 on the boundary of k. And here operator L is a generalization of Laplacian operator associated with the measure mu. So it is a Laplacian v minus scalar product of two gradients. Another uh, definition that we will need is the definition of principal frequency. Again, also principal frequency of domain k will be defined with respect to measure mu. And here we have infimum over all functions u. Again, vanishing on the boundary of k, ratio of integral of square of gradient u to integral of square u. And the principal frequency also is uh, known as the first a eigenvalue of this differential equation. Here we have, a, a, again, the same operator L associated with the measure mu and function V, eigenfunction, a vanishing on boundary of K. Both torsional rigidity and principal frequency possesses monotonicity property. So if we have a two sets where K is subset M, then uh, torsional rigidity will be maximized for m and minimized for a principal frequency. Now we would like to consider, a, compare two measures. We will cons consider Lebesgue measure and then what happens in a, for Gaussian measure. So first of all, in case of Lebesgue measure, the operat operator L is just a Laplacian a, operator. Well, Gaussian measure equipped with density 1 over square of 2 pi to n e to minus x squared over 2 is equipped with operator L, known also as Ornstein Olympic operator. Here we have Laplacian d minus square product of a gradient v times x. And for Lebesgue measure, uh, among uh, other things, we have uh, two celebrated uh, inequali inequalities. Uh, two is a parametric is a parametric inequality. So, if we will have uh, two sets, we will consider sets of the same measure mu. Then, principal frequency will be minimized on the Euclidean ball, while uh, torsional rigidity will be maximized again on the Euclidean ball. Both these inequalities can be easily proved uh, using uh, rearrangements. So just to remind the uh, uh, Schwarz rearrangement, if we have function u, non-negative function defined on k, so we can define a rearrangement u star defined on k star. There, all level sets 
uh, of uh, U star are Euclidean balls of the same measure as, uh, as corresponding level sets of the original function U. And uh, such an arrangement gives uh, that uh, uh, integral of U squared just equals to integral of U star squared. And for in case of non-negative function u, we will just have that integral u will be in, equal to integral of u star. Moreover, we can uh, also state here the polar sego principle. Polar sego principle, which states that a, a integral of square of um, gradient u will be greater or equal to square integral of square of gradient u star. Now, let's consider the same situation in a Gaussian space. So now if we will consider two uh, domains of the same Gaussian measure, then instead a uh, Schwarz rearrangement, we will need to work with Gaussian rearrangement and polar sego principle will be replaced by Earhart principle. So now our uh, Gaussian as a perimetric regions are not Euclidean balls but half spaces. So our uh, domain K star is just a half space H and this rearrangement in Earhart principle uh, can be very useful for example for evaluation a analogs of a fiber crown inequalities and torsional and the uh, Saint Fernand inequality. So, for example, we can find in uh, Carl and Kiers, uh, a, the analog of fiber crown that again, principal frequency under Gaussian measure will be minimized for the half space H, and while the in, in work, for example, of ellipses from 21, we can find that the uh, torsional rigidity with respect to Gaussian measure will be maximized on the half space H. Going back to Lebesgue measure, Paula Sego also asked the following question. So now, if we will fix not the measure of the sets K and uh, will, will uh, assign to it corresponding Euclidean ball. Now we will uh, take a domain K and we will take an Euclidean ball of the same torsional rigidity T. What will happen with a principal frequency? Will it be minimized again on Euclidean ball or not? And the answer uh, was uh, provided by in works of uh, Cora Jobin, works from 78 and 82, where she gave a positive answer and she applied a new rearrangement technique. She defined and used so-called modified torsional rigidity. We will talk about modified torsional rigidity a bit later. But the natural question is what happens in Gaussian space? So if we have analogs of other inequalities, will it hold also for uh, this inequality, the polar sego uh, conjecture, will it hold for Gaussian space or not? And we succeeded to uh, give a positive answer on this question for Gaussian measure. So we proved that for any convex domain K, and the, the half space H with uh, the same torsional rigidity. We have that the principal frequency is minimized for the half space. The solution, however, is uh, not trivial. We need to apply special properties uh, of functions uh, all related to the special of the Earhart uh, rearrangements. Um, holding on for Gaussian measure. So first of all, uh, some properties of a torsional, Gaussian torsional rigidity. So we can actually consider, is the, by definition, we already said that this is a supremum of this ratio. 
However, it can be given also as infimum of integral of square of gradient u. It can be presented as supremum of functional, uh, an analog of Dirichlet energy in Gaussian space. And finally, if we will take function v to be a Gaussian torsion function, then the torsional rigidity, Gaussian torsional rigidity of a domain k can be found in one of the following ways, or as integral of v, or as integral of a square of gradient, or again as expression for a energy. So now, let us define by a HS the right half space. So actually, again, once we are speaking about arrangement uh, it, into half spaces, we have dependence on one coordinate. You will consider dependence on the uh, first coordinate x1. And we will denote by T of S a torsional rigidity of half space HS with respect to Gaussian measure, of course. This is our definition. So we have the following uh, lemma. Such torsional rigidity, if we consider such torsional rigidity, it's a derivative T prime has the special form. It, it is a minus square of two pi. Here we have e to s squared over 2. And here is the very important component. Here we have a Gaussian measure of half space hs squared. And this component has, is very meaningful for the following applications. So now, a short a sketch of uh, the proof of this lemma. So as we said, we can consider a torsion function. So if we will take a differential equation LV equals minus 1 on K, and we define our function as just to be, again, we need to satisfy the boundary condition V equals a, a 0. So our function, our torsion function Vs, should have a form like a v of x1, a function of the first coordinate, minus v of s. Obviously, it satisfies the boundary condition. Now, uh, by solving uh, the uh, equ differential equation, we find that the function v, capital V, satisfies that uh, its derivative has form like exponential to t squared over 2 times integral from t to infinity e to minus tau squared over 2. And this form comes from a solution of differential equation. Now, once we have a torsional a torsion function, we can find a torsional corresponding torsional rigidity as a integral of square of gradient. So our uh, derivative will have this form. Again, the important component of this formula is a uh, square of measure of this half space. Okay, now, we will speak about a little bit about modified torsional rigidity. So we will, def if we denote by T gamma V, exactly the functional that we already saw, functional uh, uh, reminding the Dirichlet energy, and we will consider it for all function V in a W12 vanishing on the boundary of K. So by proposition, we know that the a torsional, a Gauss, a Gaussian torsional a rigidity should be equal to supremum of over all functions of V from V space. 
And now here is the modification. So now we will not consider all functions, but let's consider functions u, non-negative on k. Again, we will consider only fun functions that which are vanishing on the k. And then we will consider among all functions v from w1 to naught, we will consider only functions v with the same level sets as function u. Okay, so again, only, this, only function with the same level sets. So now, these are our functions. So now our functions will be actually, uh, will, can be actually presented as a composition of some function phi with function u, with a chosen fixed function u. And we require only that uh, this function at uh, zero will be equal zero. And actually we need a function be defined, we need to consider interval between zero and u max, the maximum value of function u of reference function u on the domain k. So now let's say it formally Gaussian modified torsional rigidity t mod of k with respect to a reference function u. This is the maximum of our functional t gamma v, but only for function v from class CLU. Again, functions with the same level sets. So actually, now the functional t gamma v is just a functional over a composition of phi with a function u of x. Okay, so we, we fix non-negative function u with nested level sets, here the condition. And now if we denote by k uh, sub t uh, level sets of function u and dkt all points, their function is exactly t. G gamma of kt, this is just a measure of level sets kt. And in the similar form, we define L of t, integral over um, a dkt of gradient, with a respect to a n minus one dimensional a Hausdorff measure with our Gaussian, Gaussian density. So actually, Defined in uh, this way, the modified, uh, the Gaussian modified torsional rigidity with respect to function u will be defined just as integral from zero to u max over ratio square of Gaussian measure of our level sets kt over L of t. And the element of a square of a, a measure of a set repeats also here. So if we, the, the immediate corollary of this proposition is that a function t, that the t modified the gamma, will be a Gaussian modified torsional rigidity of kt with respect now to function u of x minus t. So we can define our modified torsional rigidity for any level sets. And uh, this value will be now given from, by integral from t to u max. And let's say that now we have function d of t. The distribution function of the modified torsional rigidity of k with respect 
to function u. So we can see from this definition of distribution function d of t that uh, here we will have a d minus 1 prime to be a ratio mi a minus L of d minus 1 of tau over square of a Gaussian measure of k d minus 1 of tau. Now, very arrangement. So, our uh, proposed rearrangement, we will uh, map our domain k into k dagger, a right half space uh, with Gaussian measure. And we will do it uh, as following. So, we have modified torsional rigidity of domain k for fixed reference function u. And now, let's say it equal to t naught. We will take the half space k dagger such that it will have the same Gaussian uh, torsional rigidity as k, as modified torsional rigidity of domain k. The arrangement function u dagger defined on the half space k dagger again is a non negative function non-decreasing in first coordinate x1 and constant for all other coordinates. And we are looking for function u dagger to be a, a composition of some function a with torsional rigidity of half space. Here, t of x1. This is the torsion or Gaussian torsion rigidity of half space, depending on the coordinate x1. To define function f, we take a function, a real function f, which is non-increasing, with following property. f prime of tau will be given by this ratio. So here we have d minus 1 prime times a ratio of uh, measures of corresponding uh, level sets, k d minus 1 of tau and h t minus 1 of tau. And another requirement for on boundary that f of t naught equals 0. So properties of such, uh, such a rearrangement are as following. So first of all, we have that the integral of uh, square of gradient u is just equals to integral of square of gradient u dagger. We have also that integral over u equals to integral over u dagger. And if we will take non-convex, non-decreasing function f, we will have that the integral of f of u will be not greater than integral of f of u dagger. And all this holds for a half space k dagger with torsional rigidity, which is less or at most equal to the torsional rigidity of the original domain k. An important corollary of this theorem is application of the third property. So if you will consider function f of t to be just t squared, we'll immediately have that integral of u squared is not uh, greater than integral of square of u dagger. Let's consider some, uh, some uh, uh, properties of this function. So if you will consider, for example, a integral of square of gradient u. So by the by a application of co-area formula, we will just have integra integration from 0 to u max of Ls, which is by definition of distribution function, is just an integral from u 0 to t naught 
d minus 1 prime squared, and here we have a square of Gaussian measure of a uh, level sets. If we will consider integral of a gradient of u dagger, so on a level, on level x1 equals just t minus 1 of tau, by properties, by integration, we will have here 1 over square of, uh, root of 2 pi, here exponent of uh, minus t minus 1 squared over 2, and here we will have f prime tau t prime of t minus 1. Now, applying the lemma, we will get that we already we saw this lemma. Applying the lemma, we will get that this integral has the following form. It's just minus f prime times square of a Gaussian measure of this half space. Which means, if we will consider integration of square of a derivative of gradient of u dagger, it can be presented as integral from a 0 to t naught here. By definition of our function f, we will have, um, excuse me, before definition, we will have, by definition of a u dagger, we will have here f dagger, f, f prime squared times square of Gaussian measure. And for function f with property, as with, defini with definition, which is equals d minus 1 prime, with the ratio of Gaussian measures, we will have exactly the equality of these integrals. So appearing of a square of Gaussian, Gaussian measure is very important component in uh, this rearrangement. And it happens uh, based on properties of a uh, Gaussian spaces. And a uh, immediate corollary of this theorem, we have that the ratio Rayleigh, Rayleigh quotient does not increase under such a rearrangement, which means that the principal frequency, Gaussian principal frequency of a K dagger will be not greater than the Gaussian principle of original domain K. And since we, and also we have that the Gaussian measure of K, a torsional, Gaussian torsional rigidity of K again, greater or equal to Gaussian torsional rigidity of k dagger by its definition. So we have uh, our result proof. This is the analog of, uh, this is the answer on polar Sega conjecture in a Gaussian space. Thank you for your attention.